Hey guys, in this video we are going to be setting up Pi-hole, which is a DNS based ad blocker. We are going to be installing it on our Raspberry Pi, but Pi-hole will work on any Linux machine, so if you have a Linux machine in your lab environment, then you should have no problems following this tutorial and installing it on there. So let's go ahead and get started. The installation is very simple. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is head on over to the Pi-hole GitHub page, and then we're going to grab this one-step automated installation command, and uh, we're going to copy it over and paste it into our SSH session. But before we directly paste it into our terminal, I'm going to switch my user to root by running the command sudo-s. And this switches my user to the root user, which is required for the pi-hole installation. Alright, so now that my user is switched, I'm going to paste in the installation command. And now we can see that it is running through the pi-hole installation. Alright, so the installation should complete pretty quickly, and if you run into any issues, just make sure to check your privilege, and uh, just make sure you're running as root. Once the installation is complete, you will be presented with a screen that looks similar to this one. Go ahead and hit OK here, then you'll be presented with which interface you want to use. I'm going to select my Ethernet interface. Up next, we have our upstream DNS provider. I'm going to use OpenDNS, but using Google DNS is just as good. And after that, I'm just going to accept the default for all of these. Just make sure you have a static IP address set, since this is going to be a DNS server and you're going to have other clients pointing to it. You don't want to be using DHCP. You want to make sure you have a static IP address set. Alright, so once you've configured all your settings, it's going to finish the installation. And it should just take a minute or so. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Alright, so the next thing we're going to see here is Pi-hole telling us that we need to set our DNS clients to point to our Pi-hole server if we want to take advantage of it on our network. So this is very simple to do. You can go into your computer and just change the DNS server, go into your phones and change the DNS server, or you can go onto your router or DHCP server device and just change the DNS server that it hands out to your clients. All right, and so with that, the Pi-hole installation is complete and we are ready to start using it. So one thing to point out at the end of this installation, it does give us the web interface that we use to access Pi-hole. You can access it via DNS or by the IP address. I'm going to connect now with Chrome using the IP address. So you can see that I connect up using the IP address and then slash admin and then it brings us to the administrative user console. So you can see from a brief look that it is a pretty good looking interface. We can see that over 80,000 domains are being blocked. And it also and, gives you some uh, stats on the total number of queries, the temperature of the device, as well as the load and memory usage. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually log into the Pi-hole console so we can see more of the administrative tools. And I'm just going to enter some gibberish for the password here so I can show you the error that we're going to get. And here we can see that Pi-hole actually generated a password automatically for us and output it in the console. And it also gives us an option to set a new password using this command. So I'm just going to hop back to my console here. And you can see right here highlighted web interface password. So I'm just going to take that and paste it into the administrative console. Alright, so I'm all logged in now and you can see that I have a huge list of different options available to me now, but most of them aren't worth going over until we actually point a client to our Pi hole and start using it. So let's do that next. Alright, so if you ever want to test a website that has a lot of advertisements on it, just go to a speed testing website. I'm using speedtest.net here and as you can see my screen is completely littered with advertisements. And if you're not seeing advertisements, make sure to turn off your ad blocker. It's very important to set a baseline before you start actually testing your pie hole so you know that advertisements are being blocked by it. So now that we've confirmed that advertisements are obviously not being blocked yet, let's point our client to the pie hole and test this website again. All right, so I'm just going to go into my Ethernet adapter, go to properties, and then I'm going to go to TCP IP go into the properties and then use a custom DNS server and I'm going to put in the IP address of my Pi-hole server 
And that's all you need to do on the client side. So let's hop back into our browser and check to see if those advertisements are gone. Okay, so we're back in Chrome here. Let's go ahead and refresh. And it's looking pretty good. I think this is just a caching issue. But let's go ahead and check the Pi-hole admin site and see if we're getting queries. And we can see that the Pi-hole admin is seeing the queries and it is blocking traffic. So let's go ahead and just clear the cache in our browser. I'm gonna start a new incognito browser and go back to the site. And it looks like I'm still getting a caching issue here where the advertisements are half loading. So let's go ahead and open up a Firefox browser to get rid of this issue. I knew I installed Firefox for a reason. And now that Firefox is open, I'm just going to go ahead and go to that speed test website. And it looks like it loaded and I don't see any advertisements, so we can see that clearly it is working. Alright, so now that we successfully tested Pi-hole and made sure that it is blocking traffic for us, let's log back into the admin interface. And here we can see that we've had 93 total queries. It's detecting two clients and it's detected that it's blocked about 4.3% of the traffic. If we go to our query log, we can see the domains that it is blocking and it's blocking it based on the gravity list and it gives a list of connections that it is okay in forwarding. Um, if you notice that things are being blocked that shouldn't be, you have the option to whitelist. If you notice things that are going through that should not be, uh, you can go to the blacklist. So if you notice that an advertisement loads, you can go into this console, have a look for the domain name that looks sort of suspicious, and then just blacklist it. You can see your complete whitelist here. I haven't whitelisted anything or blacklisted anything, but as I go on and use this, I'm sure I will because some of those advertisers are pretty sneaky and they do get by. Some other additional settings that you might want to look at in the Pi Hole is under settings here, and it tells you all about your system so you can see that it's only using like 5 megs of memory, it gives you the cache size, how much CPU and memory it's using, and then if you hop on over to DNS, you can see your upstream DNS servers, but here's a setting that a lot of you would be interested in, and it's the interfaces that you listen on. So right now it's just listening on the Ethernet interface, but I'm eventually going to move this Raspberry Pi to my Wi-Fi network, so I want to listen on all interfaces. That way it's going to respond to DNS queries when it gets moved over to just Wi-Fi. So that's good, I will save that. You can see that there's an API, so you can gather information from your Raspberry Pi, pull a bunch of data if you need to. If you head on over to Network, you can see all your clients and the amount of traffic they're generating. So it actually does give you a lot of information on what's happening on your network, which is very important. And then uh, one last thing that you can do on your Pi Hole that's worth mentioning is there's this big disable button. This basically pauses Pi Hole from doing any sort of blocking, so it's very good for troubleshooting if you can't reach a site. Just make sure to go into the Pi Hole admin interface, disable it. You can disable it for like five minutes or so, and then go see if you can visit that website. If you're still having issues visiting that website, then you know the problem wasn't related to Pi Hole. Anyways, that's all I have to show you guys for this video. I hope this video was helpful, and let me know in the comments below if you plan on using Pi-hole on your network. If you want to see more tutorials in regards to Linux, DevOps, or Raspberry Pis, then please subscribe to my channel and let me know what video you're interested in seeing next. If you want to join our community of other DevOps engineers and those learning DevOps, then please join our Discord. The link is in the description below. Thanks everyone, and good luck with your Pi Hole setup.